Hello again. And if you've watched my unboxing video, which I did actually just yesterday, uh, in that video I said that I was going to turn the camera on, uh, open the box for the mount, and just... I don't know, go through the instructions, uh, give my reactions, give my personal reactions uh, to how all of it feels, uh, my experience as an absolute beginner uh, in putting this thing together. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to continue to say that in every video I make, however many that is. And oh, well, I was just sitting there looking at the box last night after I created that video and I realized that I didn't have the opportunity to have a personal interaction personal allow allow myself to feel what it was to open up all this amazing gear i had decided to turn on the camera and tell you about it and i not that i'm regretting that but in a way i wanted to have a moment to myself to sort of experience what it is to have this gear to put some stuff together to to be alone in a room and doing the stuff that is the gear part of astrophotography. I don't, maybe it sounds a little nerdy or, or, uh, whatever, but I decided that I was going to just put this together on my own and have my, have my moment, have my thoughts rather than trying to explain what it is that I'm thinking or feeling about any of it. So I put this together last night, uh, and had a really good time with it. Took my time. I really think that once I know what I'm doing, if I was to completely put it back the way that it was for the for the travel case and put it back together, I could probably get the whole mount on here and set up properly in about five minutes. Uh, last night, it took me about 20 because I was going step by step, was being very careful about everything that I was doing, making sure that I didn't break anything. Um, and also, I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> uh, it's probably pretty easy for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing to break something. And it's quite expensive too to be trying these things out on. Uh, but I'm very happy with this. Uh, last night I had the whole uh, tripod extended. It's very tall, which is great. It felt very sturdy, especially after I added the accessory tray to the bottom. Uh, I haven't plugged it in. I am saving that for, for a video. I think that that's going to be a fun one to talk about. And uh, So when I plug it in for the first time and do that setup, there's a whole setup guide. Uh, I am probably going to do a video for that one. Although I probably shouldn't promise these things. So uh, one thing I did want to mention, so I want today to be more about putting the eye guider on. There's almost no videos on YouTube about the eye guider, probably because it's so simple. Um, and the instructions even come with the mount, not with uh, the eye guider. But one thing I wanted to mention is that it wasn't when you when you open this up and you you put it together there's there's a couple of of things i want to note in the instruction manual it says the the allen wrench the that hex screw uh wrench is supposed to be in a hole to lock the ra axis i think it's the ra axis uh and it wasn't it was actually in the holder and there was no other one floating around i was sitting there digging around in the case, in the plastic, trying to find if it had fallen out because you're not supposed to pull it out without having that Allen wrench in there. And uh, there's none out, There's none in there. I, I ended up pulling it out very carefully because I wasn't sure if I was going to break anything. And there's the one, It's it was in the hole where it's supposed to be stored all of the time. Uh, and that's the one that it's used for the whole system. And I didn't feel like I was going to break it, actually. Thinking back on it, it actually felt... The whole thing feels very sturdy. Uh, I was very careful with it. And I think that if you encounter the same problem uh, where that Allen wrench is not where it says it should be, just be careful when you pull it out of there. Don't send me any bills if you break your... <laughs> it wasn't immediately obvious to me that the azimuth locking screws were something that had to be pulled out of the holder, out of the placement that they're in, and then screwed into the hole next to them. Uh, maybe maybe to people who've done this before, it was pretty obvious, but to me, it felt weird to like just leave a hole <laughs> uh, where these other ones are supposed to go. But I guess that's the way that it works. You pull them out of there, and you put them into the, into the uh, 
space that's next to them and is lined up with the holes. And of course, once I take this rig outside and I'm trying to polar align, I'm going to loosen these a little bit and that's going to be part of how I can line it up. I have no idea what I'm talking about with that. Uh, but watching somebody else's video of polar alignment, you unscrew these, there's a little bit of space on either side so you can kind of fine tune, I guess, that part before you start messing with the, uh, with the controls. So that's the mount. Uh, I wonder if there's anything else. Oh yeah, when I was messing around with it, I realized um, that I knew nothing about the polar alignment uh, element in here. So you take this off and you take this guy off and you look through it at Polaris where I am in the Northern hemisphere. And, uh, I decided to take a look through it here in my office. And I can tell you at the very least it's nauseating. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't look at it for very long, but, uh, I thought that it was really nice that it's built into this this mount, I don't have to buy anything separately. Um, I'm going to see, I'm going to learn how to do that before I decide whether or not I want to get, uh, you know, one of those cameras that can do it and you line it up in your, in your software and point it at the sky. But anyway, yeah, I'm spending way too much time talking about the mount. And today I want to be talking about the eye guider. And the reason I want to talk about the eye guider is because nobody else is talking about the eye guider on YouTube. I think that it would be helpful for some people to see somebody just install it, uh, especially maybe a beginner who doesn't really know what they're doing. I'm installing it on a mount that's built to have this particular item attached to it. I have seen one video where somebody created, maybe they 3D printed some sort of uh, attachment uh, so that they could get their their uh, guide scope and camera into the same position. But the, the Gem 28 that I'm using has the screws already here next to uh, where the telescope will attach. And the guide scope itself already has the, uh, whatever the, this thing is called. Whew. Don't know what I'm talking about. Is this called beginner's journey? It is. Well, good thing. So I can get away with not knowing what these are called properly. Is it a Los Mandy? What is that? Maybe you can tell me. Maybe I can look it up in a little while. We'll find out later. Anyway. All right. So, uh, what we're looking at here is the little bit of water that I spilled still over here on the desk. It's always good to spill water all over your electronic equipment, especially as you're making videos about it. So, we're looking at the, the guide scope, the camera, the wire to plug it in. In this bag, we have a couple of very small Allen wrenches. We have screws to attach the scope to the mount. And we have an additional adjustment screw. And of course we have this cap, uh, I'm guessing for this end where the camera is currently sitting. So, uh, there's not a whole lot of instructions in the manual on how to put this together. And as somebody who's just touching all of this kind of stuff for the first time, I'm pretty, pretty excited. Actually, there's another uh, screw hole here. So maybe it's for additional uh, tightening. I don't actually know. Gonna find out and I'm gonna let you know. Anyway, in order to get this onto the mount, we need to remove this part from the uh, guide scope. So that just took two twists and it's already off. We're going to attach that to the mount. Then we're going to slide this guy right in there and it should be, should be attached. All right. So now what we're looking at is 
the mount and where I've got the camera looking so we can get a little bit of a close up of what I'm actually going to be doing here. You've got the screws here on either side, which is where this little guy is going to go and it should line up perfectly with those screws and with those screw holes and we'll just attach it there and that's going to be it pretty straightforward. So I'm going to take these Allen wrenches that they provided with the with the scope. It's the bigger of the two. I just tested. And we're going to screw them in. I'm going to start by hand. I'm not going to tighten it too hard because I don't want to I don't want to strip anything or break anything but I want it reasonably tight so that feels reasonably tight it's in place and good to go that's on well that was easy what about the scope Should I be worried that the logo is upside down? Camera's pointing this way. This is the top. Telescope's going to be pointed this way. Well, maybe it's something that I'll find out the hard way. But for now, I've got that lined up in there. I'm just tightening the little uh, screw here. And again, not not overly tight but you know yeah don't want the scope to fall off and damage the scope or damage the camera or anything like that so it's it's pretty tight on there and then uh what do we have we've got a couple of extra pieces eh, you know when you build things there's a few extra pieces so not too worried about that maybe when the whole thing falls off and then i look it up they're like hey dummy what about those pieces that you didn't install I'm like, oh, okay, that must have been what it is. Uh, pro tip, make sure this camera is actually tightened in here. I didn't realize I had left it a little too loose, so make sure it's nice and tight uh, before you let it drop to the floor like an absolute novice uh, who's making a video and now has two strikes one spilling water and one dropping their guide camera on the floor hopefully it's in good condition the the guys at ioptron hopefully <laughs> take into account that uh people like me will be handling their gear okay anyway uh what i wanted to talk about next was connecting it uh so this end goes into the back of the the camera which I can show you by unlocking that guy and maybe holding the camera at an angle that you can see. So, yep, it just plugs right into the back there of that camera and the other end into the computer where I will be using some software to help guide the, gu the whole mount and that's not totally locked. Oh, it is. It's totally locked. I'll lock this guy back up again. It was just for the sake of showing you. Uh, I'm not going to plug it in just yet because I don't have the software or anything connected. But that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how simple it is. Uh, even though I found a way to screw up and drop the camera, it's pretty straightforward how it gets on there. You may see another video where I call myself really dumb for somehow not understanding why this was upside down, but yeah, <laughs> that'll be strike three. And then I'll remove this video from YouTube. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but anyway, that's, that's, I guess, part one, 
part two is going to be figuring out how to connect that to the software and guiding the actual mount. Thought I was done recording, but then I realized that this is a beginner's journey and the whole point is to explain some of the things, some of the learnings that I have. So uh, after I stopped recording and opened the door and you can hear the construction, sorry, uh, I realized that, that there was that second hole in the side where the camera goes in and there was the second screw that came out of the bag. And maybe it was obvious to you when you were watching, but it wasn't so obvious to me. I thought it was an extra screw in case I broke the first one or something like that. But uh, instead, what I've done is besides tightening that first screw good enough to hold the camera in place, I added the second one also. Uh, I don't know what that's going to do to how the camera is seeing. Uh, maybe it adjusts it just slightly. I'm going to have to learn that part of it. But at least now I feel a little bit more confident that it's not going to fall out of the back of the of the guide scope. Jeez. Okay. This beginner is signing off for now, and I will be back when I start to install some of the other very interesting gear that I have. All right. Thanks.